So far, when we looked at quadratic equations, we had two ways to solve them. One was factoring, and one was using the quadratic equation that we developed in our last video. So now, today, we're going to look at a third way of attacking a quadratic, which is called completing the square. But let's first review factoring. So if I wanted to factor out this problem, we would take the 4 to the other side. And when I do this, I get x squared minus 3x is minus 4 is equal to 0. Now it is in the form that I could plug it into the quadratic equation if I want, or I could factor it. So first let's look at factoring. We're going to break this 4 into 1 and 4 and 2 and 2. But remember that it's a negative. So one of these numbers is going to have to be negative, And it's going to be the 4 because negative 4 plus 1 is equal to negative 3, which is going to be the coefficient in front of the linear term. So we break this down into the binomial, and we get x is equal to 4, and x is equal uh, to negative 1. Now let's look at the quadratic equation method. So we have this, bin this quadratic equation. So we're going to let our coefficient on the a be 1, b be negative 3, and c be negative 4. And we're going to just plug that into the quadratic equation to get our, uh, our answers for what x is equal to. Remember, it's important that our equation be equal to 0. So we plug this into our equation. We get 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 4 times negative 4 over 2. That simplifies into 3 plus or minus the square root of 25 over 2. Now what we're going to have is two cases. We're going to have case 1 where we have 3 plus 5 over 2 and 3 minus 5 over 2. For case 2, let's do that one first, just for the fun of it. We're going to get negative 2 over 2, which simplifies to negative 1, which is exactly what we found by factoring, so that's good. Then we have 8 over 2, which will equal 4. So we can see, if we do the math correct, both will give us correct answers. The quadratic equation is a little bit more, is a bit more useful because not everything breaks into nice numbers. You'll find that the quadratic equation and completing the square it's tools you're going to want to use when our numbers aren't so nice. So completing the square really relies on your linear coefficient. So let's write our equation out. x squared minus 3x is equal to 4. Well, we need to first identify our linear coefficient. Our linear coefficient here is going to be negative 3 because remember just x would be linear so we're going to take half our linear coefficient and square it and then we have to add it to one side but when we add it to one side we have to add it to the other so this is negative 3 over 2 squared would be negative 3 squared which is positive 9 and uh, 2 squared which would be 4, so we have adding 9 fourths to both sides. When we do this, what we're going to have is we're going to first find our common denominator, which will be 4 times 4 plus 9 over 4, which will give us 16 plus 9 over 4, that'll be equal to 25. Um, 25 over 4. Now, this side is actually a square. That's why we can, in completing the square, you're essentially giving it a constant that does not have a term associated with it that will make this problem square. So the square is found um, during the first step. So when you take your linear term and you take half of it, that is going to be the square you'll have x minus or well you'll really have x plus half the linear term so if we wanted to verify this we're just going to foil out 
what we found is our square, and that'll give us x squared negative 3x over 2 minus 3x over 2. Then we'll get plus 9 fourths, which is what we added to both sides. And this breaks down into negative 6 over 2 x, which is really just x squared minus 3x plus 9 fourths, which was what we started with. So we can now solve both sides by taking our square and square rooting both sides of that square. So let's uh, write that out. Remember that when we take a square, uh, square root of anything, what we're going to get is a plus and a minus sign. So this is going to give us 5 over 2, and I'm just going to write that in parentheses with a plus or minus sign in front of it to signify that we have two cases going on here. And remember this square root sign can be absorbed too. Uh, I just wrote that plus or minus sign over there to kind of show that the whole thing is plus or minus. So now we're going to have two cases that arise from this. We're going to have 5 over 2 plus 3 over 2. And we're going to have negative 5 over 2 plus 3 over 2. They all have the same denominator, so we can just add these up. 8 over 2 equals 4, which is once again what we found by the other two methods. And then negative 2 over 2, which is equal to negative 1. Both give us the right um, answer, and they all verify each other. So I figured what we would do next is find the other term that we need for completing the square. So let's just go through this exercise real quick. Uh, this first one we have, our linear coefficient is 4. So what we're going to do is take 4 over 2. Then we're going to square it. And this is going to be our constant that we have at the end of our equation. So let's solve for this. This is going to be equal to uh, two, 4 divided by 2 will be 2. 2 squared is 4. So we have x squared plus 4x plus 4. And this will, come, this will verify because it will factor into a square. So if we thought about uh, just taking our 2, our linear coefficient half, it will equal uh, our square, our constant within the square. On this case 2 over here, what we're going to do is take half of the linear term again, so 9 over 2, and that won't reduce. So what we're going to do is square it. When we do that, we get 81 over 4, and that'll be our constant. And 81 over 4 doesn't reduce either. Writing this as a square, we're going to have x plus the linear coefficient half squared. So this will be x plus 9 over 2 squared. Okay, so more examples. Once again, to find these, all we're going to do is take half the linear term and square it. So negative 3 over 2. And what we're going to do now is, you guessed it, we are most assuredly going to square it. And I just kind of skipped a few steps here. Um, that's going to just be taking half the linear term, and that'll be part of the square. Over here, x squared minus 17x, half the linear term squared will be the constant. That'll be equal to 1. Well, let's multiply this out. I'm not good at my 17s tables. Um, Two eighty nine. So we'll have two eighty nine 
over 4. That does not reduce. So if we're to write this as a square, we're going to get x minus 17 over 2 squared. Let's look at solving quadratic equations by completing the square, which we did at the beginning of the video. So let's look at a few more examples. We have 3x squared plus 9x equals 1. We're going to factor it. First, we're going to factor out a 3, so we have a constant of 1 in front of our quadratic term. So when we do that, we'll get x squared plus 3x is equal to 1 third. Now we're going to complete the square and add our constant to both sides. So we're going to take three halves squared and add it to both sides. So now when we do this, we're going to get x, the, well let's, let's factor this side into the square, we can get that done first. So we're going to get uh, x plus 3 halves quantity squared. The other side is going to have a little bit of uh, common denominators to work out, but it's going to be 1 third plus 9 fourths. So let's find that common denominator. The left side stays the same. We're going to have a common denominator of 12. So what we're going to have is multiply one side by 4 over 4, the other by 3 over 3. It'll be 4 over 12 plus 3 times 9 over 12. That's 27. Now, one second, let me move this equation out. Okay, clean that up. We have x plus 3 halves squared. And then we're going to add those together. We're going to get, uh, what would that be, 31 over 12. Now what we're going to do is take the square root of both sides. Remember when we do the square root, it's going to be plus or minus this value. So this will give us x plus 3 halves is equal to plus or minus the quantity 31 over 12. Now solving for x, we're going to take the 3 halves to one side. We're going to have a case 1. x is equal to 31 twelfths minus 3 halves. Case 2, 31 over negative 31 over 12 minus 3 halves. we got to find a common denominator. It'll be 12, so we just multiply the 3 by 6. When we do this, we're going to get 31 minus 18 over 12. Let's go over to case 2, same deal. 3 times 6 is 18 over 12. And as I'm dubbing over this video, I realize that that should actually be square root of 31 over the square root of 12. So those answers are wrong. Just note that it would be the square root. All the math's correct except where I did the square root. Taking this next equation, we're going to distribute the x first. That gives x squared plus 7x. Then what we're going to do is move that 3 to the other side. So that'll be 7 on the other side. Then we're going to take half the linear term and square it and add it to both sides.
Now we know that this argument's going to break into a square that we've completed, and that'll just be half the linear term um, plus x. And now we're going to find a common denominator for this other uh, term, this other constant over here. This will be 49, which will be 7 squared over 2 squared, which will be 4. So our common denominator on that other side is going to be over 4. Let's just rewrite this square over here this will be equal to 7 times 4 over 4 plus 49 over 4 to be 28 plus 49 over 4 now we square root both sides After we add the 28 and the 49, which will be 77 over 4, that does not reduce. Okay, we have x plus 7 halves is equal to the plus or minus square root of 77 over square root of 2, I mean square root of 4, which would be 2. Now we're going to break this into cases. Case 1 is x is equal to plus square root of 77 over 2 plus or minus. Well, we can use plus or minus. So right here. We're going to break this into a plus square root of 77 over 2. Um, for case 1, case 2 will just be the opposite. So this breaks down into negative 7 plus square root of 77 over 2. The other case would be negative 7 minus square root of 77 over 2. Okay, so this last one, we're going to have x squared plus 9x plus 2 is equal to 7. So the first thing we do is take the 2 to the other side. Subtract 2 from both sides is going to give us x squared plus 9x is equal to 5 on the other side. Now we're going to take half of the linear term and square it and then add it to both sides. 9 is our linear coefficient. So this gives us the square of x plus 9 halves. equal to 5 plus 81 over 4. Now we have to find another common denominator. That would be 20 plus 81. First, let's figure this side out. Uh, that'll be 101 on the top. And we have x plus, the quantity x plus 9 halves squared we're going to square root both sides, plus or minus. Remember that. We're going to have two arguments because this is a quadratic. So we get an x plus 9 halves is equal to plus or minus square root 101 over 2. So case 1, x is equal to negative 9 halves. And these have the same common denominator. So what I'm going to do is since they have the same common denominator, let's just keep the plus or minus sign there. So we're just going to write it as negative 9 plus or minus square root of 101 over 2. And that will equally represent both cases.